So hello and welcome to this week's episode of Tales of the Resistance, the podcast about microbes and their levels of resistance. My name is Mara Zeltz. I am the project manager with the I Am Responsible team, which is outreach and extension and research all about antimicrobial resistance. And I'm one of the regular hosts of this podcast, but joined as always by my co-host, the marvelous Amber Patterson. Hi, I'm Amber Patterson. I am the multimedia graphics designer for the Schmidt Lab, and I also work with the I Am Responsible team, and I'm happy to be here. Returning again to the guest chair is the marvelous Noelle Atieno More. Hello, uh, I'm Noelle Atieno More, a uh, recent graduate of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln uh, with a degree in environmental engineering and also a part of the I Am Responsible team. For this week's episode, we're, we're continuing our series to explore how different expertise um, is being applied to the antimicrobial resistance problem and how that problem of antimicrobial resistance is sort of manifesting in a, a variety of fields and in a variety of ways in the world around us. So this time we're going to be exploring um, environmental engineering and what an expertise in environmental engineering looks like and how the folks working in that field are being brought in to um, uh, to the problem of antimicrobial resistance and what what they can do to help solve the problem. We're going to be joined in our discussion of environmental engineering and antimicrobial resistance by Dr. Shu Li from the University of Nebraska Department of Civil Engineering. Um, and he's going to talk a little bit about the work that he does um, for himself and also for the field uh, that he's in. Before we get started on that, uh, what are you looking forward to most uh, in this discussion? I'm just excited to hear about his insights. I'm excited to see what he has to say that's different from what we've heard before. There's definitely going to be some overlap here with all of our manure expertise because environmental engineering is a big part of that discussion. But there's a lot more to be said in terms of uh, how to handle other types of waste products and, um, and the potential uh, environmental contamination and antimicrobial resistance contamination in areas. Um, my name is uh, Shu Li, and I'm currently a professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. Um, so my background is uh, environmental engineering and environmental uh, biotechnology. So for those of you who are not familiar with the, uh, um, the field of environmental engineering, so this is a, an engineering discipline uh, that's focused on developing technologies to uh, mitigate contaminants in various uh, environmental media, uh, water, air, or soil. Um, a lot of the work that I do are related to microbes. Um, some of the work are using microbes to uh, remove contaminants from water, from soil. Uh, some of the work are related to uh, um, having pathogen being the target contaminant and try to develop uh, mitigation technologies to remove them from the environment. And this antibiotic resistance uh, is one example where um, that can be considered uh, a target uh, microbial pollutant. And we try to remove those from uh, various environment. Uh, wastewater treatment is a big part of the uh, environmental engineering. So uh, the, we have you know, wastewater treatment plants where uh, municipal wastewater is being collected and the, uh, the various pollutants uh, like oxygen uh, demanding wastes and other micro pollutants are being removed in the wastewater treatment plant. And there's also some of the anaerobic digestion process to remove some of the solids collected in the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, for me, actually, uh, a lot of my PhD background was focusing on municipal systems. So in, in my research at UNL, I sometimes try to adopt some of those technologies used in the, on the, on the municipal side 
to the agricultural waste management side. Let's dive a little bit more onto the antimicrobial resistance side. You mentioned it a little bit in terms of that's one of the uh, targets that you might have, but can you describe a little bit more, like what are the specific issues related to antimicrobial resistance that you're trying to use environmental engineering tools to solve, either in an agricultural waste, municipal waste, or whatever the application? So, so the antimicrobial resistance is a, is, is a very big topic, and people from different fields work on different aspects of, uh, of, the, of antimicrobial resistance. Um, the, uh, and, and one, uh, the one health concept actually is a very good concept to uh, um, connect uh, many different components together, uh, that including human, animals, and, and the environment. So the part that we focus on was um, the basically the environment part. Um, after animals, waste is uh, being discharged. Uh, well, after animal waste is being accumulated in a, an animal facility, uh, eventually they, they will be a land applied or in some way get into the environment. So what we try to focus on is to um, test and then develop different uh, manure management practices that can help mitigate the, uh, the, the transmission of those uh, manure-borne antimicrobial resistance bacteria, resistant bacteria and resistance genes. For example, we conducted a series of uh, studies to look at um, the current manure management practices and see how effective they are in terms of uh, mitigating AMR as the manure move from animal facilities to the environment. The work, well, the, the experimental approach that we use um, are both field testing and lab testing. Uh, in terms of field testing, um, you know, we'll work with people to build uh, test plots or uh, collect samples from the feedlot. Um, and then bring the samples back to the lab. Uh, we'll conduct different kind of analysis on the samples. Uh, for some of the chemical analysis, you know, we would send it to uh, a, a, the water sciences lab or any specialty labs that can measure those antimicrobial chemicals uh, in the sample. In our lab, doing a lot of the microbial analysis. Uh, so for example, we would count how many antibiotic resistant bacteria are there in a particular sample? Uh, samples can be a runoff sample, can be a soil sample, can be a manure sample. Um, and in addition to uh, counting bacteria, we also look at the DNA of the microbial community within the sample. So that would involve extracting the DNA from the sample and then do some downstream analysis. Um, sometimes we want to see the, uh, the, uh, uh, the amount of specific resistance genes in those samples. And then we have a technique called uh, quantitative PCR. And that can give us very accurate measure of the uh, number of resistance genes in any given sample. And sometimes we would uh, more interested in, in the, uh, the entire uh, resistomes in a sample. In that case, we would send the samples to a, a sequencing facility where they would sequence the DNA in the entire sample. And we'll get a sequence back from the core facility and do uh, bioinformatic analysis. Uh, there are computational pipelines that would out, allow us to assemble the, the DNA reads from the sequencing machine and then uh, get an overall picture of all the resistance genes in the sample. Uh, we call those the resistomes of the sample, and that can give us a more comprehensive picture of what kind of resistance genes is in, in, in one particular environmental sample. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the experimental part. Um, we also do a little bit of the modeling because um, the models sometimes can help us um, explain how, the, how the, the resistance genes are moving from one environmental compartment to another. What are some of the underlying mechanisms um, governing the, the transport process of those genes? And also those models can be used to predict under a different climate scenario or different environmental conditions, how those genes may be uh, transferred from soil to runoff and to surface water. 
So we also try to do a little bit of modeling work, try to uh, develop those models that can provide all those information. What else would you say that you've learned from the work that you have done that is sort of, um, that is, is most exciting or, or encouraging in terms of, of what tools we are starting to learn that we have for addressing antimicrobial resistance in the environment? Yeah. Um, so as an engineer, we like to develop new technologies. And um, there's, you know, we tested uh, existing manure management practices and we'll see how effective they are. And we also try to develop some new ones. And there's one technology we, de we developed, uh, actually Noel was, 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 was part of that effort, was to, to use the, uh, um, some, some heat, uh, conductive concrete pad uh, to help um, eliminate or control AMR in, in manure during the, during the storage phase. Um, you know, this concept is actually, it's, it's, uh, it, it's borrowed from our, my colleague in the, in the department. Um, he, they, they, he, he invented the conductive concrete technology and used that to build some of the highway bridges uh, for the icing purpose. Um, and you know, at one point we thought, you know, what would be a, a cost-effective and simple approach that we can inactivate resistant bacteria in the manure stockpile? You know, if there is a technology that can heat up the pile to a higher temperature, that can be effective in inactivating those bacteria. And then I thought about this, oh, this conductive concrete technology. You know, for the icing purpose, they just needed uh, a temperature of, you know, a little bit higher than freezing point. So what if we can raise the temperature to a higher level um, and see if that will be uh, effective in inactivating resistant bacteria? So we got a few testing slab from him, the smaller slabs of like 1.5 feet by one feet. And we brought to the lab and we were able to heat up the patch surface to a higher temperature. And we got some very promising results from the, uh, um, the, the lab spill testing. And you know, we're testing some of the pilot spill slabs in the field. So I'm, I'm kind of really excited about developing a new technology uh, that um, expected to be simple. Um, making it easier to be implemented uh, on, on a farm. Um, and if that can be effective in heating a larger size manure pile, then that could be really a, a effective mitigation strategy for uh, the AMR in livestock waste. Yeah, and the and what you said there about like the sort of ease of use, I mean, I mean, there would be energy use to this, but the the management wouldn't be different really necessarily. They're just still piling it up and then it's heating on the slab. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's very true. We, um, you know, one thing that I learned from starting working in this uh, agricultural waste area is there's some there's the biggest distinction between municipal site and agricultural site is the, the the technology has to be simple and easy to implement. In the wastewater treatment plant, there are pumps, there are diffusers, there are uh, different pipes, and there are um, you know, specially trained engineers to, to monitor those systems. All of those are not available on individual farms. Um, you know, the producers don't have the technology or the, the, uh, the, the, the capital, um, the resources to build that kind of sophisticated treatment systems. So I think the easy to use, I, that's usually always something that I, I try to keep in mind uh, when designing technologies for agricultural waste. And of course, there is the energy utilization. And we try to really try to get some data from the pilot lab. And we'll try to see monitoring how the, the what will be the energy use uh, to heat up the, the pad. So we don't expect to operate that for need to a very long time. If a few days of time that can heat up the pile to a higher temperature and maintain that, maintain, maintaining um, uh, the temperature for a couple of days, maybe that would be adequate. Um, so yeah, those are, that's a very uh, key um, parameter we want, to, we want to collect from this uh, pilot skill testing. What lessons on this audience could use in terms of maybe applying in their life or just like knowledge that they should know about the work that you're doing on AMR? 
Um, but the first lesson I, I, that come to mind is um, when, when we, when we uh, uh, try to approach the AMR problem from the one health perspective, the human, animal, and the environment, I, I work in the environmental domain, and I, I usually find that is the, uh, that's one of the three components that is um, probably has the least amount of data and um, and that's one of, and also that's one of the, uh, the, from my perspective, that, that was, a, was a little bit harder to study. And I can tell you why I think that was a little bit harder to study. Um, you know, unlike collecting samples from directly from human waste or human or animal waste, you know, once the, once the, uh, the, uh, the, the antimicrobial resistant bacteria or genes get into the environment, they quickly dilute it to a very low level. And sometimes we want to um, you know, capture some clinical relevant AMR uh, resistance genes that was originated from human or animal. It is very hard to um, you know, capture those genes at the right moment and at the right place. Uh, because they, they you know, let's say if they get into the water, they, they quickly move, or if there is one episode of pollution, and maybe one week or two weeks after, the impact is so diluted that's really hard to, um, to capture and to detect. So, um, but you know, it's a challenge, but that's, it's also when, when people are paying more attention to the environment, I think they will be coming up with some solutions in the creative ways of, uh, of sampling and more effort into collecting data. And hopefully we can capture those episodes of pollution. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, what does it mean for, uh, you know, people who generally work in the area, I feel like it's, if you mitigate AMR, the, the best way to mitigate them is when it's kind of closer to the source. Um, you know, there is the wastewater treatment plants kind of taking care of most of the human wastewater. And if there are technologies that can take care of the animal waste before they are land applied, uh, while they're still in the animal facilities and that's a relatively high abundance, higher concentration, and that is easier to, to mitigate. And once they get into the environment, it, it is a lot harder to, uh, you know, people have a lot less control over those processes. So I think that will probably be the, uh, you know, the lesson that will be, will be relevant to, you know, people who work generally in that area. And another source, as we're speaking, I, I can think of is, if there are uh, like pharmaceutical companies uh, that manufacture antibiotics, if their wastewater contains, if they do not remove antibiotics thoroughly in their, from their wastewater, then when those wastewater are discharged into the environment, you know, they can really promote the emergence of antimicrobial resistance that way. Um, so those are also, you know, can be a significant, significant source, uh, not direct, but indirect source of the, uh, um, for EMR in the environment. One of the questions that we've probably asked is uh, how to disseminate the information, not only to the stakeholders and also like make sure that it gets to the public. So is there a way that we can, uh, we can disseminate or communicate the findings of EMR in the environment to the general public and ensure that they know the main adversity that we are facing with this issue. Yeah, definitely the outreach to the, the general public is uh, um, you know, it's a key to get the message across. Um, the, I know like the IAMR project is, is doing a, a great work in that regard. And also if there are um, you know, activities, like, um, outreach activities, even if it's a smaller scale, from like a high school students, or as they visit university campus, if there can be outreach activities, talk about those. I think you know eventually, if people heard those phrases and and you know, talk about that, um, you know, eventually, I think the more and more people will be aware of um, you know, how this, how the environment may also play a role um, in, in combating the AMR uh, problem overall. Thank you so much for, for joining us today and sharing about how AMR um, is, or how environmental engineering and that profession is sort of addressing antimicrobial resistance.
Yeah, well, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for organizing the uh, event. I really, it's, it's really good to see uh, to see you all on the on the Zoom call. So, thank all you. Right, thank nice you. Nice to see you, Doctor Lee. Yeah, you too, Noel. It was <laughs> nice meeting you, Amber. You too. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Dr. Lee mentioned DNA within the microbes and environment, qPCR, um, which is basically to break up those that pieces of DNA into individual genes and sort of count how many of those genes are present. But they can also do what's called metagenomics. And you would know this better than me, Noel. It's a little bit newer technology. It's definitely more specialized. Uh, so metagenomics analysis is... Uh... It's the analysis of the entire DNA sequence in, say, a bacteria. And so how that works is that you'll get a sample and then you would figure out, you would uh, extract the DNA from the sample. And if you heard from the podcast, Dr. Lee mentioned that we send it to a facility who will do the metagenomics analysis. And so in that case, it's like a three-step process where the DNA is broken down and eventually what comes out is the different constituents, like what bacteria or what particular species are in that sample. And the way that you figure that out is through bioinformatics. And so that's the next step in metagenomics analysis. So you'll get the entire sequencing data uh, because that's what is done during metagenomics. It's the sequencing of the, of the sample. Uh, with, the, with the DNA within a sample. And so with bioinformatics, you get the data and then bioinformatics is the uh, evaluating of the data in order to figure out what different bacteria samples are in a particular manure sample per se. I think that's a good good explanation. A Amber, did you have any other um, things that you caught when he was chatting about environmental engineering that you think we need to make sure we kind of give some background on. I felt like I was more hopeful than some of the other people we've talked to. And, um, you know, just talking about his work, that there are processes in place to move forward and, and combat some of these contaminants. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and I'll just share a little bit for, um, for the listeners who, who don't get to see, because we had uh, Dr. Lee on Zoom here, and we got to see his face. Um, so when he was talking about, you know, new technologies, he's just like very, very happy about them. You know, like okay. like a kid on Christmas morning. <laughs> How exciting! Excited do engineers get about developing new <laughs> technologies, even if the technology is just about um, treating poop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, when he was talking about the conductive concrete and how he borrows uh, technology from his uh, graduate program to the work that he does in dealing with uh, AMR in animal manure, you could just see his face light up and uh, yeah, the excitement was very vivid. Which Other is good, we need them to be passionate about it. Somebody's gotta be passionate about it. So thank God. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for joining us on our podcast interview with Dr. Shuli, an expert on antimicrobial resistance, majorly in agricultural environment, and for following up with us on the very small discussion that we had, and hopefully that uh, you'll join us again next time with our next guest. Thank you. That's kind of what modeling is all about. Is like, all right, we've got a bunch of very disparate information. How do we put them all together in a way that the relationship between that data makes sense? And so that the combination of that data is now more powerful than they were individually. Like, it's like power, it's Power Rangers, right? By our powers combined, we are now able to defeat the giant robot. <laughs> So that is, that's modeling.